Always a pleasure to welcome in former NHL netminder Carter Hutton to the show. And Carter, I want to start with the question about Sergei Bobrovsky that I've been asking. Frank, I've been asking everybody, have the Oilers solved Bobrovsky or have they rattled Sergei Bobrovsky? I think a little bit of both, honestly. I think just getting pucks to the net. And I feel like this Edmonton Oilers team, they knew they could do this, right? Even you look at game one, how well he played. And and even for those first three games, he made so many big, timely saves. So I think for this Oilers team, it's a confidence in them. You know, the fact of instead of gripping your sticks a little tight, trying to make the perfect shot, now they've found a way to get to the back of the net. And for me, I think his game has dropped off a bit. Like you look at McDavid's goal last game, that is a game that a goal that can't go in. I know Henry Lundqvist went on and talked about the RVH and you got to stand up. And there's a perfect example of why you can't stand up. Smart players know where to shoot the puck. And for me, it's really going to test his experience tonight. I think going into this hostile Edmonton environment tonight and see if he can bounce back. Carter, I want to get your take on this. And admittedly, it's a little bit of a different question, but Wayne Gretzky, obviously the great one, best player of all time. He picked up on something and related to Bob Stoffer, my friend, and he said he thinks Sergei Bobrovsky is left eye dominant. Would that have anything to do? And first off, my mind was blown when I heard this going. <laughs> How does Wayne Gretzky, what, 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 he just watches the game, thinks the game on a different level. But when you think about the goal that went in from the goal line, if someone is left eye dominant and you're trying to look out your right eye to see it, is that does that help explain things and does that help? maybe explain a little bit of his game. Yeah, like a bit. I, I guess that is a wild take, obviously, for a guy that sees the game in a different light. And I, I've played with a few guys that not necessarily eye dominant in a sense, but they would have stronger sides. Like I was more right side dominant for sure. Like I would always drop my blocker side pad and I think guys would read up on that. And for Broski, I think his mobility at times hinders him. At, like he tries to do too much and he tries to be too cute in the way he sees the game. I would assume the eye vision test, the amount of stuff that goes into preparation, vision training uh, would be sorted out by that sense. I remember later in my career when I was playing in Arizona, I actually had a VR set that I would put on before games to like activate my eyes and go through the program. So maybe there is something there. And McDavid, you know, it's a great play by McDavid. I just think it's the wrong save selection for Borowski in that situation. But it's really hard for me to sit here uh, and argue with Wayne Gretzky's take on it. So it's definitely an interesting take. And I... I've never really thought of that, Frank, to be totally honest with you, but it is something, it's something, uh, you know, you can definitely dive into here. Yeah. I mean, I've never thought about it. And then when you look at all the goals scored in this series, where have they almost all gone in? It's been Bobrovsky's blocker side, which then if you think about it, okay, maybe he's just not seeing it as well. Yeah, it, it could be a function. And I actually dealt with some vision issues when I played in Buffalo. I, I had got a, a form of a concussion whiplash. And in practice, I started struggling tracking the puck, right? It was just simple shots, even point shots, things that would be routine normally. And Mike Bales, goalie coach at the time, he had dealt with Marc-Andre Fleury, who had a concussion, and he had struggled with some vision issues. So I ended up I ended up seeing a guy to help me with my vision, and my vision was actually out of sorts. So I ended up going to see a specialist in Buffalo, and I worked on it. And that's when these things became part of my daily routine. And then all of a sudden, when I wasn't doing it, or if it, it started to linger a bit, I definitely noticed, right? And these are... Like, we're not talking about something driving the car making an issue. We're talking about trying to track a puck in an NHL game. Yeah, a, a little bit more difficult when you're trying to see that little black disc. Uh, let's flip the ledger here. Stuart Skinner, his numbers <laughs> in games five through seven and four through seven of series, absolutely remarkable. And maybe what's more impressive than that is in each of the last two games, he's come through with timely big saves early in these hockey games as well. What's been standing out to you about Stuart Skinner and his quite frankly, bounce back from being one of the worst statistical goalies in the cap era to what we're seeing in elimination games here. Yeah. And, you know, like in the last two games, you know, three goals on 65 shots where the opposite end, you know, Barossi giving up nine on 39 shots. That's been a huge difference. And for me, it's his, he gets so comfortable early in a game when he makes that first save, right? You look at last game, I, I think a chance that kind of got overlooked in my opinion was the chance Reinhardt had right in the slot to start the game. Reinhardt puts it right into his chest, right? And it's not necessarily, I think I think if you talk to Sam, he would be mad about that shot, right? But for Stewart Skinner, getting a chance like that, feeling the puck early, and then you look at the save on Ekblad, right? It's an east-west play. Barkoff made a great play to steal the puck. That just sets the tone for me for Skinner and for the Edmonton Oilers, right? Because he is a goalie that I've been that goalie before and I've played with guys where they struggle. It goes throughout the team, right? So, and they get the big shorthand goal. He sets the tone. And for me, he's been a difference maker. And I think more than ever again, now you can visually see him. You guys are, you know, boots on the ground, but I'm watching on TV at home. You can see him vibe into the music. He's feeling good. And I, and I know that feeling, right? When you're in the zone and, and it seems like, 
you're unbeatable. He feels like he's back to that level, and it's been really fun to watch here. And you look at his numbers through games four through seven in this playoffs, a 938 save percentage and 9-0 and in elimination games. Like, you know, he's getting the job done here. Or not elimination games, but through those games in the series. All right, to wrap up our chat, Carter, I'm going to throw you one that was in our, our YouTube chat today and ask the FO Inbox question. They said, does the narrative around Stuart Skinner change if he wins the Cup, or will he always be the sort of, you know, NHL backup caliber goalie who played with a really good offense in front of him? I, I, I think for now that is going to be the case, right? With, you know, it's hard. That McDavid and Dreisaitl and Bouchard and the points and the Oilers offense is always casting a big shadow, especially on a goalie that, you know, has a sub 900 save percentage here in the Stanley Cup final. But I also think he's going to be a legend forever. If they can get this job done and come back from that, It'll just be interesting in the hockey terms what they do with him moving forward. You know, do they bring in a guy to, you know, protect him a bit and push him? But, you know, it's hard to take away his credit. You know, what he's done has been amazing. But I also feel like there's always a little bit of that shadow cast because of McDavid. Not sure that he's going to care. He would be the second Edmonton yeah. to lead the Oilers to Stanley Cups. That'd be pretty special. And the other guy has a banner right about there, yeah. Frank. So it is uh, certainly pretty special. Carter, thanks for doing this, man. Always, always appreciate your time and enjoy the hockey game tonight. Yeah, you guys too enjoy it. I'm jealous you're there. <laughs> thanks, Hudson. What's up, hockey fans? If you enjoyed that video, then you need to be hitting the subscribe button right here at Daily Faceoff. Exclusive interviews and analysis from our hockey insider, Frank Zaravalli, fantasy updates from Brock Sagan, and a daily live show at noon Eastern, Monday through Friday. You don't want to miss any of the fantastic content, so hit that subscribe button.